Welcome everybody in chat and here on YouTube. We have a different thing that we're going to be doing today. We have Ravnica Allegiance. The entire set was just previewed for us today. So we're going to go through and talk through all of the cards and give them all a letter grade for Constructed. So we're going to be looking at just standard um, whenever we're going through and considering our grades for that. So we'll have... Um, you know, lever, letter grade uh, A through F for each one of the cards, um, where we'll be doing, uh, uh, and we'll have plus or minuses and everything like that. No, we won't be doing any other video for limited, but we'll be doing it, you know, just for just for standard here. Hey, we got a sub today, Screwfu. Thank you so much for subbing there. I do appreciate it. All right, so to kind of run down the, the letter grade here, and also you, you'll you be able to uh, look below in the um, info panel for, for what I'm going to be going through, but I'll go ahead and put it here on the screen for a little bit while I read through this um, for our grading scale. Maybe that'll make it a little easier to see. All right, so A is a format all-star among multiple archetypes. I have an example here for each of the colors. I didn't really put them in, like, necessarily order, but... So, example of cards that would be A's would be like Jade Light Ranger, Lava Coil, Adanto Vanguard, Ravenous Chupacabra, Search for Escanta. You can get better than an A. You could be like an A+. Like Teferi would be an A+, for example. Um, for a B, that would be a format staple among multiple archetypes. You know, So that's a card that you'll see a lot in the format, um, including maybe sideboard cards or a defining card in a single highly played archetype. So you're looking at like Merfolk Branchwalker or Lightning Strike, Takatli Honor Guard, Duress, Sinister Sabotage. Those would all be Bs in my opinion of the current format. Uh, C would be a card that sees some regular amount of play in the format or is an important card in a single highly played archetype. So these would be cards like Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Plague Crafter, Radical Idea. Those would all be Cs in my book. Yeah, Teferi <laughs> could get its own grade, basically. Uh, I mean, there would be a couple other A-pluses. Like, I think History Banalia, Niv-Mizzet would be able to get up there, too. Uh, D is a card. If the card gets a D, it just sees a very slight amount of play in the format. Or it has maybe just, like, a fringe archetype that you build around it. So these are cards like Crushing Canopy. I don't I don't know if that's a that's a great example. I should probably get a better example than that. But then... But uh, Gutter Snipe, Invoke the Divine. So, you know, like, these are cards that just see a little bit of play in the format. Um, or, or like, look, Lich's Mastery, that has, like, a deck built around it. That would be a D. Lookout's Dispersal. Um, I'd have, like, Haphazard Bombardment would be another example of a D. And then F would be seeing no play at all in the format at all. Uh, I just have, like, some bulk rares and mythics here. I guess these are all rares. But Old Growth Dryads, Alpine Moon, a Johnny's Last Stand, Fring, Omnis... Om Nipotence, Fleet Swallowers. We're going to have a lot of Fs uh, when we go through these different uh, cards here, um, especially in the monocolored, because a lot of the better cards are multicolored, with Ravnica being a multicolor set. Um, there's only 30 cards of each single color in Ravnica Allegiance, and there's a whole lot of multicolor cards. So we're going to be going through color by color. This video is going to be all about the white cards in Ravnica Allegiance. And so there will be a lot of like, you know, draft commons. It'll just be an F, and we'll kind of move on from those. All right, so let's kick it off with card number one in the set. You know, we're going to be kind of going down through the the number ordering of the cards. You can you would be able to see that in the bottom left hand corner with Angel of Grace. So this is a mythic. It's three white white. So that's five converted loyalty. I'll be reading the. Uh, mana cost like that by saying the number of generic mana you need and then the color requirements. So three white white for a 5-4 flash flying when Angel of Grace enters the battlefield under uh, until end of turn, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. And it also has the ability that you can pay four white white and exile Angel of Grace from your graveyard and your life total becomes ten. Okay, so first first thoughts in the chat. We got we got some bees here, um, and let's see let's see what we got here. So five mana for a five four flash flying creature. If we're just kind of looking at that, that's a solid card. We've seen Archangel Avison 
be similar to that. Flash is just a really um, underrated mechanic in general, um, in my opinion. It's or keyword, I guess not mechanic, but keyword. I think just flash creatures are really good. Uh, we saw Dream Eater have flash in Guilds of Ravnica, where if Dream Eater didn't have flash, I think it, it would see absolutely no play whatsoever. But because it has flash, it would see some play as a six mana four three even. Um, with an ability. So I think the flash is quite strong. And we also, we also with the creature being an angel, that's also a really big benefit because we have a lot of cards that care about being angels, mostly Lyra Dawnbringer. Hey, track team. So already I'm liking the card for just 5-4 flash flying. Um, so yeah, so the, uh, let's, I'm going to read a couple of these things. So this card can be a solid B. The only way to control control can compete with Banefire with instant speed. So yeah, this this would stop Banefire with that, sec, with that uh, I guess, first ability. When it enters the battlefield, damage that reduce your life total less than one reduces it to one instead. I don't know if that's like really a reason to play the card. I'm not sure how much Banefire will be in the format. Uh, I don't expect Banefire to be too much in, in the upcoming format. I think the format will be getting faster. But that, that text isn't nothing. Like, that's still something. Like, you could still just be quite far behind, and maybe it just saves you another turn from a lethal attack kind of thing. Um, it makes Settle the Wreckage maybe even better, where, you know, like, the opponent's like, Ugh, do I attack all these creatures? And if they, if they don't, if they only attack with, like, a couple of creatures, you can play Angel of Grace uh, to make sure you stay alive and block. And so then they have to be incentivized to attack with like you know four or five creatures and then your cell the wreckage is better yep g going by colors yep so we're starting with white here um so so th that line is definitely not nothing um i'm not sure if that means that control decks with not many creatures and cell the wreckages and stuff like that are just going to be playing just jamming a bunch of angel of graces in their deck potentially but uh kind of doubt it um and then the last line's not nothing either. Exile it from your graveyard, your life total becomes 10. Of course, you do have to get Angel of Grace in your graveyard, which means it has to die. A lot of the removal is, well, not a lot, but some of the removal that's very popular is exiling, like Lava Coil uh, would get rid of an angel, angel of Grace, same with Vrass's Contempt. So those kind of things wouldn't not put Angel of Grace in your graveyard. You can't just reliably just as assume that if you have Angel of Grace in your deck or even in your hand, if your life total is at like two or three, you can just make it become ten right away. I uh, can't really assume that. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, one good point is that you can discard it to Chemist's Insight or, or some kind of Jumpstart card. That's that's a really good point. You can discard it to a Jumpstart card to put it in your graveyard to become ten if you're playing a blue-white control deck. So that's pretty good. So we have we have a lot of people saying uh, between A and B, and I think that's where that's where I'm at too. I don't think this is an A, um, but I think it's going to be a little bit better than a B. So I think we're we're kind of in the B plus to A minus range, and I think with the synergy with being Angel with Flash and also having some other just some some good relevant text, I think I would give this one an A minus. So <laughs> now Urza, we're gonna get we're gonna get through some of these other cards pretty quickly. This is a mythic, you know, we spent some more time on this card. But um, our next few cards are going to go a lot quicker. So I think I'd go A- minus for Angel of Grace here. Yeah, because look at some of these next cards. All right, Angelic Exaltation. Three white enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. That's an F. That's not going to see any standard play. I... I am reading through these cards, though, in case, uh, I guess I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but um, some people will be watching this on, like, YouTube or just want to be able to listen. Maybe maybe if you want to, like, even if you're here on stream, if you're, like, doing other things, you know, like cleaning your room or whatever, I do want to just kind of read the cards, because these are also new cards and everything. Archway Angel, 5 white for a 3-4 flying. Uh, when Archway Angel enters the battlefield, you gain 2 life for each gate you control. That's an F. No standard play. Arrestor Zeal, white, instant, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Addendum, if you cast the spell during your main phase, that creature gains flying until end of turn. This one would be close to seeing play at just one mana, plus two, plus two. 
Uh, this may see possible play. I'm still going to give this an F, but this was this was you know like an F plus maybe. <laughs> That's a thing. May, maybe a D, maybe a D minus somewhere in there. I could possibly see this card being played in a standard deck. You have not missed any colors. Perps, good time. Uh, we are at card number four. We're we're at white going down the card list. You're you're going to your LGS to draft tonight, and your last draft with hours of devastation. Ooh, best of luck. Best of luck. Yeah, strictly better heroic leap. So yeah, maybe maybe a D, but okay. Bring to trial, uh, two and a white sorcery exile target creature with power four or greater. Um, been getting like some some C minuses and C's in here. I'm not in love with this card. I mean, I think if if you're wanting to play three mana, get rid of creatures, power four, or greater, you're probably playing something like Citywide Bust there. Um, I, I think this would probably be a D uh, to... Yeah, I think there's going to be a very, very slight chance that this would see play. Uh, so I'm thinking like a, a D here. But it is it is exile. That is that is a good point. That exile is is very important uh, at times. So I think that's why it'd be a D. If it was destroy, I think it would, it would be an F. But exile, I'm giving it a D. S Civic Stallworth, three and a white, three three. Uh, common. I should say the rarity of, of these two. So Civic Stallworth is a common three and a white, three three. When Civic Stallworth enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. That will be an F. Concordia Pegasus, one in a white for a common, flying one three. That's it. That's enough. Exposed to daylight, two in a white, instant, common. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, scry one. I could certainly see this card seeing some sideboard play. Um, you know, this is similar to Invoke the Divine. Uh, <laughs> it does have really good flavor. Uh, yeah, it does have very good flavor. Um, so I, I think I would say this this card's a D, um, but I, I could see this very similar to Invoke the Divine. Uh, or wait, Invoke the Divine, I think I, I said earlier, was a... Uh, whoops. Yeah, Invoke the Divine's a D. So yeah, I think this is just very similar to that. Um, we'll see some sideboard play sometimes, but not very often. But yeah, the Scry 1 certainly makes it better. <laughs> well, so, okay, so a good question is, problem of adding cards for Constructed is that they usually, 90% of times, the card isn't very good or doesn't make the cut. C, D, F, doesn't matter if they're not all Constructed playables. Well, I think, like, Cs are Constructed playables, like I, I said earlier. Like, examples of Cs for me would be, like, Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Playcrafter. Ds and Fs are basically not very uh, Constructed playables. Yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of difference there. For Forbidding Spirit, this card's kind of interesting for an uncommon three white, or sorry, it's a one white white for a three three. When Forbidding Spirit enters the battlefield, until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless those creatures pay two for each one of those creatures. I think unfortunately, you know, this is this is also just going to be, um, you know, in that uh, I think it may D minus it, you know range uh, this isn't going to see much play but unfortunately it's only until your next turn like whenever it enters the battlefield if that was like a static effect that just always if this was just always like uh they can't attack unless you pay two this could certainly be a whole lot better but with it only being the static static effect for the the one turn or like the effect for one turn not going to quite be good enough yeah but since it doesn't don't like how it doesn't last has that officer is a common two and a white three two enters the when it has that off, officer enters the battlefield target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn it's an F. These single color card like like I mentioned before um, just to kind of reiterate uh, a lot of the power in Ravnica Legions is in the multicolor card so these like the single colors we're gonna have a lot of F's in these commons <laughs> F minus. <laughs> um, here we go here. Here's a here's a card. This is a rare hero of precinct one, one in a white for a two two. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a one one white human creature token. This card's good. So every multicolored spell. So that means creature spells, um, 
anything, instant sorceries, anything that's multicolored, you just comes along with a white uh, one one creature token, um, and uh, that's certainly very good. Is it relevant in green white in modern? Potentially. Potentially. That always looking for two drops there. Maybe. But um, I don't think this is Alright, so so basically this is gonna be a really good card, right? So this is I think this is we're looking at either an A or a B. Um, or it's like somewhere on on uh, that range. So you certainly kinda need to build around it, right? Because you're gonna want to like just play lots of multicolor spells for it. So it's not gonna just go in like all sorts of different archetypes. Um but yeah, so it's any multicolor spell. So like you're talking like, you know, if it's an Esper or something, you have like Thought Erasure, Disinformation Campaign. You know, every time you're playing your Disinformation Campaign, picking it back up, playing it again, that kind of stuff. Every single one of those, you're getting a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, so I, I don't think this is an A. I don't think this is like Jade Light Ranger level um, or even a Danto Vanguard on that. But this is certainly going to be a really important card for like a multicolor archetype. Our mana base is going to be really good, and there's so many good multicolor spells that you can build around with this. Like maybe you put it in um, a Boros Aggro deck with Tajik and and maybe other colors. Like maybe you know you're you can definitely play like Mardu or or anything like that. Um, I think I'm going to give Hero Precinct one a B. I think that's a that's a B. Um, yeah, it's not Young Pyromancer. Uh, but it's kind of close. The problem with multicolor spells, they're usually kind of expensive, right? So the good, like these kind of effects are definitely a lot better when you can cast a lot of them. Like, like Young Pyromancer, for example, you can play lots of one mana cantrips, and you're making a one one each time. You can't really play lots of multicolor spells and make a bunch of one ones right away. You know, you're basically just kind of getting a one one each turn. Um, because you're usually only casting one, maybe two multicolored spells a turn because they're going to be costing two at least two mana so and does yeah heroic reinforcements is quite a good card with this making another one one yeah this is certainly a good heroic reinforcements card for sure also so it's a solid b for that's why i give hero of precinct one all right next up impassioned or orator which is a common one and a white for a two two Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Unfortunately, it's only entering the battlefield under your control. Um, but still, I could see this being a sideboard card against burn, against burn decks um, for like token-based strategies or something. You can gain a, a decent amount of life. Yeah, it's a it's a soul warden um, type effect. Uh, it's only under your control, of course. But I'm gonna give this one a D. I could see this. This thing, yeah, lifelink deck with it with a, a Johnny's uh, pride mate and stuff. I think it's a lot better card than a Johnny's welcome. We see people play a Johnny's welcome just on on arena, and I think this is a lot better card. Putting it on a creature actually makes the card worthwhile. Than I don't like a Johnny's welcome at all. Uh, Justicers, Justice Sears, Portal is the next card. One in a white instant. Exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. It gains first strike until end of turn. So we have just a two mana for a blink effect and giving your creature first strike. Kind of kind of using it as a removal spell sometimes or save your creature from a removal spell. I think this is um, probably just going to be an F. I don't think this is... I don't think we're going to really see the blink effect. You'd have to play a lot of creatures with ETB effects. If you're doing that, you probably probably just rather have another creature with an ETB effect or something along those lines than a Justice Seer's portal. However you say that. It could it could be kind of cool with like Chupacabra. That is true. You know, if you have those kind of things, but I don't know if you're just putting that because like whenever you don't have your Chupacabra, then this card's just dead. And so I don't think you're putting this card in your deck. Hey, green dude. Okay. Uh, next next card, Knight of Sorrows. Four and a white, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, if only you had Thrag Tusk. Now that Thrag Tusk would be a reason to play it. Even like we saw like Momentary Blink. Didn't that have like Flashback whenever that was played? Um, 
Yeah. Knight of Sorrows, four and a white, three, three, can block an additional creature each combat and has afterlife one. Um, this is going to be an F. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the afterlife mechanic more on another card than this, but I, I'm not loving that afterlife has a number, or I'm not even sure if like the number is necessary with afterlife with how like this set's kind of played out. I don't know. We'll, we'll discuss it later. Next card's a rare, Lumbering Battlement, 4 and a white, 4-5 Vigilance. When Lumbering Battlement enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-token creatures you control until it leaves the battlefield. Lumbering Battlement gets plus 2, plus 2 for each card exiled with it. It is some sweet artwork. We'll give it that. Great, great artwork. I have a lot of like high, high ratings in the chat with this one. A lot of people saying A could be a B. Um, and we have, we have somebody saying an F and we got some C's. I'm, I am very skeptical, skeptical about this card. So like, what's your good case scenario? You're going to play a five mana, four, five vigilant, right? And then you're going to exile some, some of your creatures that are not tokens. And like, let's say you exile two creatures and now you have an eight, nine. So it's a huge creature. And then they have to kill that, and then whenever they kill that, you get your other creatures back. Um, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have trample. It's just like this. I mean, I guess like if you're playing, uh, so afterlife is whenever the creature dies, not just leaves the battlefield. So yeah, it doesn't really work with afterlife things. But if you're playing like a bunch of things with ETB effects, I suppose, like hostage takers and. Militia Buglers and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, if it had Flash, it'd be playable from sideboards. Yeah, if it had Flash, you could save like your creatures from a Wrath. If you're like really far ahead and you're scared of a Wrath, you can play this and save all your creatures. It just doesn't seem like it's a, a card that you want to put in your deck. Standard, the five mana slot is is just um, there's so much competition for the five mana slot. It is protection against from board clears, which is a good point. I don't, I don't see it seeing play though. I'm, I'm gonna give this card an F. I don't actually see it seeing any play. Um, maybe we'll see a little bit of play. We'll go D. We'll go D. We'll go D. Let's so see. Maybe somebody tries it out in, um, you know, basically, a, you know, a ravenous chupacabra type deck tons of ETB effects, tons of explore. You know, you want to exile your... I guess exiling your explore creatures is really not that bad. And so they have to kill... Well, I guess that's really not that bad if you just played a bunch of... <laughs> uh, put a bunch of explore creatures under this. Okay. All right. We'll go, we'll go D+. Plus. D+. Plus. There we go. We're, we're, we're working our way up on this one. We're working our way up. Because then, like... You know, two explore creatures, you make an 8-9, they have to get rid of it, then you get your explore creatures back. That's... Okay. Yeah, Thran Temporal Gateway, unfortunately, can't can't get that one. All right, we're halfway through white already. Um, next card's an uncommon. Ministrant of Obligation, two and a white for a 2-1 with Afterlife 2. So this is what I'm saying it. Like, is, does Afterlife really need a number? Like, I haven't seen... I haven't looked at... Like, I haven't looked carefully through all the cards, but I haven't seen any Afterlife cards with more than two. Did anybody see any cards with more than two in Afterlife? Um, they have released all the cards. Yeah, all the cards are released. Um, okay, there is one with four. Okay, there is an Afterlife four card. Okay. So there's no there's no threes or anything. There's just like a random card with Afterlife four. Um, okay, there is an Afterlife three. Okay, okay. So we do have some different numbers. Anyway, this card uh, two and white two one. Whenever it dies, you know you get two one one spirits. It's obviously really good to sacrifice if you're we're playing like an aristocrat deck where we want to sacrifice our creatures. This is certainly a very good creature to sacrifice. Does that mean it's one of the best sixty? to play in your in your uh, aristocrat style deck where you're trying to sacrifice creatures. Doubtful. I'm giving this one another D. I think it's doubtful that, that this is played, but 
I could certainly see this being seeing just a little bit of play in, in, in an aristocrat style deck. Yeah, at the four or five exiles, another one of itself. Just nothing happens, really. Well, like, okay, so the first four or five gets exiled by the second four or five. Whenever, and so it's just like that. Whenever the second one dies, then the first one will come back into play, and then it could exile other things. It's if you have three of the four or fives, then you can create like an infinite loop if you have three of them, but not if you only have two. All right, we got a cat. Uh, for a common, Prowling, Caracal, one and a white for a 3-1. Awesome card. Great art. I love the art. This is... Yeah, Hawkeye's really excited about this one. You can tell he's back there. He's really excited. Love the art. It's an F, but great, great card. Uncommon. Rally to battle. Three and a white. Instant. Creatures you control get plus one, plus three until in a turn. Untap them. F. Uncommon again. Resolute Watchdog. White for a 1-3 Defender. Pay one generic. Sacrifice Resolute Watchdog. Target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. Yeah, this is this is a card for the for an Arcades deck, right? If if our if there is gonna be an Arcades deck, this is probably a card for it because it can protect Arcades, giving it indestructible, and it's a defender. Um it could be, you know, basically one mana, you're attacking with a three three, basically. Um, I think again, okay, this one like a, a D plus because it really only can go in that one deck. Arcades can't see any other play, and it's an Arcades. The Arcades deck is likely going to be a, a very fringe, fringe archetype. Um, but I, but before Ar Arcades was not an archetype whatsoever. I think it could be a fringe archetype now. Uh, it's Arcades, the, the strategist, uh, which is a mythic from m19 that allows your defenders to attack and they get to attack with uh their toughness here you go uh one green white blue for a flying three five flying vigilant when a creature with defender etbs you draw a card i forgot about that part of the card anyway each creature you control with defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than power so um and can't attack so like this would basically be like a three three when it's attacking so yeah, so I'm going to give it like a D plus. But that's certainly an important card to make Arcades work. Sentinel's Mark. Uh, this is an uncommon one and a white enchantment aura. It has flash, enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus one, plus two, and has vigilance, and it has addendum when Sentinel's Sentinel's Mark enters the battlefield. If you cast it during your main phase, Enchant Creature also gains lifelink. F. Another uncommon, Sky Tether is a white for uh, Enchantment Aura. Enchant Creature, Enchant Creature has Defender and loses flying. F. Uh, we got a rare here. Smothering Tithe. Three and a white Enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If the player doesn't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color. So every time your opponent draws a card, they have to pay two. Otherwise, you're making treasure. I actually like this card. I actually like this, this card. F is way too harsh for Sky Tether for just... I guess okay so it has i was focusing okay let me let me just back up just a, se a second sky tether actually f is way too harsh for this card one mana to make a creature not be able to attack you anymore i was really just kind of focused on the loses flying you know this is my first time reading a lot of these cards too yeah because giving a creature defender means it can't attack you so like if you're jeskai control and you can't deal it's one mana to get rid of a danta vanguard for example um so it gives like any you know so like the creatures don't attack you anymore. It's just it's just one mana. It's it's just swords to plowshares. It's just ex gets rid of the creature for one mana because it can't attack you. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Never mind. I'm going. I'm going like a C. C minus. C minus. That card's good. 
C minus. Yeah, it went from F to Swords to Plowshares. <laughs> That's turnaround. Okay, so I, I did kind of read through that one a little quickly. Sorry, my, my apologies about that. I can certainly see that play. Like, imagine that, like, that's just better than, than Seal Away in, like, I don't know, you just get to just get rid of the creature from making it attack you. Okay, Smothering Tide, though, I'm a fan of this card. Um, is this, like, is this going to be, like, you know, a format staple? No, not, not at all. But I think this is going to see some play, and I think that like in prison style decks or or uh, or decks that are, like white control decks that really want a lot of mana, you know, maybe white based decks that are not blue uh, that want a lot of mana and want to try to ramp up to bigger things. Maybe decks that are focused on like Star of Extinction, like Boros kind of kind of decks. Um, you get to you get to just make a lot of mana and. There are certainly going to be decks that can can use that. Um, yeah, it could be playable with Karn and an artifact deck also. Absolutely. All those extra treasures could certainly be be useful for that. Because cause I'm going to tell you what. People are not going to be paying two. It's basically, like, people are going to hardly ever be play, paying two. It's basically whenever they draw a card, you make a treasure. Unless unless it's, like, real late game and they don't have the mana. Um, yeah, and it's not legendary, so they stack. Um this is this is a solid card. I'm gonna give this one maybe a maybe like a C plus. Oh, it's probably just a C. It's just a C. But I like this. Yeah, it helps the Boros land destruction deck. This is a this is a cool card. I'm excited to play this card. I'm gonna give it a C. Hey Bear Army. I like it. Yeah, nobody pays for Ristic Study, and that's like less incentive to pay. Because Ristic Study, they draw your opponent draws a card. This, they just make a treasure. Pe people aren't going to be paying for that. All right, we got an uncommon up next. Spirit of the Spires, three and a white for a two four flying. Other creatures you control with flying get plus zero plus one. That is so many miles worse than Shalai, Voice of Plenty. Yeah, that's an F. All right, we got a common one in a white instant summary judgment deals three damage to target tapped creature addendum. If you cast a spell during your main phase, it deals five damage to that creature instead. So we, we currently have, um, yeah, and it's just great with treasure map that smothering tide. Just make extra treasures that you can draw cards. Yeah, this is this is another F. We currently have a card where it's just destroy target tapped creature for the same mana cost. This can. At instant speed, deal some damage to a tapped creature, but doesn't destroy it. That's that's not going to see any play in standard. If syndicate messenger, yeah, because we already have. There's even just there's just two mana deal five damage to an attacking or no deal four damage to an attacking creature right now. That's better than that other card. Anyway, uh, this is a common syndicate. Syndicate Messenger, three and a white for a two, three flying with afterlife one. Nope, that's an F. We have another common 10th district veteran, two and a white for a two, three vigilant. When 10th district veteran attacks, untap another target creature you control. That, that effect has to be very valuable, untapping another creature for this to see play. <laughs> oh yeah, no, Seal Away is definitely very much better for sure than that other one. The only thing I could see this doing, the only thing I could possibly see this card doing in standard is pairing with the new birthing pod creature where you could attack and untap your birthing pod creature and then activate it again. Or Traxos, I guess. Yeah, that's the only thing I could possibly see it. I'm going F still, but yeah, that's got to be an F. Sweet card for limited, though. It is good with Convoke because it has Vigilance and you untap something, and so you can you can Convoke. You can use like your Amara to Convoke something, and then you attack and you untap your Amara, but it's still just a 3-mana 2-3 Vigilant. Yeah, it's going F. All right, we got a rare. Uh, Tithe Taker. One in a white for a 2 1. During your turn, spells your opponent's cost. <sighs> Sorry. During your turn, spells your opponent's cast 
cost one more to cast, and abilities your opponent activate cost one more to activate until unless their mana abilities, and then it also has afterlife one. This is strong. This is strong to quite strong. Um, two mana, two power, definitely good. The one toughness is, you know, not so great. Really wish this was two toughness. You know, it doesn't tussle well against like a land war elf, for example, or other like afterlife tokens or just other other tokens in general kind of thing. Thopters, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, gets gets hit by chain whirler, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, people are saying it's a death and taxes staple in other formats. Um, so yeah, the scale is A, A to F. Yep, is is our grading scale. Um, I think this is kind of around a, a B, I think. I think so B's are cards like Merfolk Branchwalker, Lightning Strike to Kali Honor Guard, Duress. I think we're kind of around there. Maybe maybe a B plus. Okay, I I, I could give this a B plus. I like that. Give this a B plus. You know, the first ability is really nice. Having like there's certainly a lot of decks that want to activate at instant speed. And it and by the way, it's all spells your opponents cast during your turn. So that means when we talked about Angel of Grace earlier that has flash, that thing will cost six. Cause it you know, so it's not just instants and sorcery spells. This is all spells. Creatures with flash cost more as well. Um so yeah, it's good against Contempt, Chemist's Insight, uh, just counter spells like Absorb, uh, Sin Sinister Sabotage, all that kind of stuff. Really good against decks that are trying to play on your turn. Um, it does stack. So you have, yes, so it does stack. Um, so if you have t multiple Tithe Takers out, those spells will cost m even more. So really incentivize your opponents to play on their own turn. And then, yeah, and activate abilities. You want to activate your treasure map on my turn? That treasure map's going to cost you too. Uh, yeah, you, so you can quasi-duplicate this stuff. The thing is, is like people can still just spend their mana on their own turn. But if you have like Settle the Wreckage, where you can't cast that on your own turn, this is really good against that. So I'm going B+. I think this is a solid B+. Uh, the Afterlife 1 is, is certainly good, too. The 2-1 body, a little, little upset. Like... I think this this would go to A- minus to potentially A, I think, if it was like 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I think 3-2, it's at A. If it's 2-mana 3-2, this is an A uh, with the same things. At 2-1, I think I'm going B+. Plus. So, yeah, real good against Mono Blue. Yeah. Mono Blue already doesn't like the aggro decks already. Yeah, nice card. All right, three more white cards to finish them out. We have tw uh, Common, Twilight Panther, some sweet art. I always like some cats. Uh, this is white for a 1-2, and you can pay a black to give it death touch until end turn. It's probably just an F. Yeah, it's just an F. Um, you know, death touch creatures can take out big things like Carnage Tyrants, but even some death touch creatures in the current format people don't really play. This you'd have to have two different colors. This is just an F for standard. Next, we have a rare, Unbreakable Formation. Two and a white instant. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Addendum, if you cast a spell during your main phase, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of those creatures, and they gain vigilance until end of turn. This card doesn't really feel like a rare, necessarily, except for the addendum part. certainly does. Um, Pervenic says, Unbreakable Formation goes into all my tokens decks. A minus. Okay. It's certainly a lot better than Make a Stand. Certainly a lot better than Make a Stand. Um, that instant speed being able to protect them. The fact that during your turn, you give them plus one, plus one counter. Like, that's not just plus one, plus one until end of turn. Like, that's a counter. They have that plus one, plus one for, for the rest of the game. That is really good with, a, especially the lifelinking tokens and everything. Um, certainly liking this card. Some other notes people in the chat saying solid for Selesnia, great sideboard or one of in main it's kind of like a luxodon plus make a stand that's a good point it is kind of like luxodon a uh, venerated luxodon with the plus one plus one counters during your turn or make a stand and make it indestructible um yeah i like the card quite a bit i think i think this is probably um i'm not sure if this is going to be like a, a format staple in multiple archetypes N maybe not so much i think around the b level B level, but I think a little less. I think B minus. We had a lot of B minus and Cs in the in the chat here. Um, 
I think B minus to C plus. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go C plus. I'm going to go C plus. I think it's kind of similar to probably amount of play as a lot of the C's they have. Oh, yeah. If you march the multitudes into this, you just can't block. All your creatures are indestructible. You gain a million life. Um, a lot of people say an easy B. All right, B minus. So B minus, C plus. I kind of like it, one of those. We'll go B minus. The thing is, you can't just have a... like. Unbreakable Formation is the kind of card that makes some of your other cards better, but you still need to have like March of the Multitudes for like a, a large multi March of the Multitudes. So like you need to have all that other stuff, and then like your first Unbreakable Formation is going to be great. Whenever you have like an opening hand of like two Unbreakable Formations, three Unbreakable Formations, your hand's going to be awful, and you're you're not going to be able to like do all the other stuff early game. This is a great like card to like put away a game but it's not something that you want to have a lot of in your hand so yeah yeah i i could see it replacing pride of the conquerors for sure um yeah i could definitely see see that so that's so yeah good point to kind of talking through that i think i'm back back down to like the c plus over the b minus all right c plus Last card in white, we have Watchful Giant. That is certainly a giant. It's a very large giant soldier. This is a common 5 and a white for a 3-6. When Watchful Giant enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Sorry, Watchful Giant, you are an F. Definition of an F. F real hard. Okay, so there's white for Ravnica Allegiance. Um... Went through that one quick, pretty quickly. It's only 30 cards out of 259. Of course, a lot of the, some of those 259 are the lands also, which we don't really need to talk about too much. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, click on over to the next color, which is going to be blue, where you still have blue, black, red, green, and multicolor coming up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.